for all those women out there who are independent, Miss I don't need no man, you may not, but your f***ing kids do. Because men bring something into the house that, that women do not. And if there is not a man in the house to show your children the way you are supposed to be loved, your children will go up and do exactly what that was. I don't realize I am wrong until it's over. I've apologized about it, told her I hear her concerns, and I'm working on keeping my head straight when the problems arise. I am a mess, simply put. As mentioned before, I am 26. I still watch corn multiple times a day if I can. I know it's a problem. You guys have to be so careful about the things that you pray for. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I speak from experience in things like every time I'm like, God, I need wisdom and patience. Boy, do I get put into some situations where my patience is tested because like any skill, it's got to be worked on. Mm -hmm. It's not just given. My husband attended a men's group that does activities like skeet shooting. Love that. Skeet. Pool. Oh. Yeah. It's called skeet shooting. I was thinking they shoot from the little play discs. To yeah. The wall. Wrong shooting. Wrong skeet skeet. <laughs> <laughs>
and like am, am reaching out to TikTokers and um I'm at a point now where like I am um emailing I've 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 set up the interview email to my phone as well so mm-hmm. that multiple people have access to that. I don't want to go through the Peaches email because you've got like 250 or 300 emails in there and I don't I'm not yeah. trying to do that. I I just don't see a reason why we can't get somebody in studio once a week. <clears throat> it is I've noticed there's a flakiness of people. Yeah. I've had a lot of women email in wanting to be on the segment and then they there's an automated email that goes out because I'm going to ask everyone the same questions and the first response is, oh, I can't get to Florida. Yeah. Yeah. Which we've been very clear about. Right. If you're, you know, so, but at the same time, if there is somebody that is an influencer, if they have a following, if they are a artist, like a good artist, mm-hmm. um, if they're doing something that we will find real value in, not just, you know, beyond the conversation thing. So like, for somebody who has an influencer or has a following of a hundred thousand people getting them on or 500,000, a million, whatever, getting them on the podcast means that our follower base will get extended. Right. So there's a value in that. If they are a therapist or if they, uh, you know, are a, um, somebody who has worked to prevent child sex trafficking, like those kind of conversations would be super beneficial to the podcast. Those people I would be willing to pay to get in studio. I would be willing to fly them here. Um, but I'd be willing to fly certain people here. You know what I mean? Um, but I am working on, on on reaching out to other people. I actually thought about turning my TikTok conversation things on, like mm-hmm. so that people can DM me. I just don't know if I want to go that far. I wouldn't. I know. Because it's not just influencers DMing you. It is anybody on TikTok reaching out to you. Right. Well, and I can, ign- I, I don't, I don't have a problem ignoring people. Yeah. The problem is, is if I don't follow people, they can't message me. So if I turn my messages on and it's, and I'm like, all right, no, guys, it's anybody. I know that, yeah. but influencers can only message you if you follow them and they follow you. That's the way my TikTok set up. So the only way people can message me is if I follow them and they follow me and we're friends on TikTok. It's the only way I can get messages. And that's how I was able to message um, the African hippie and her husband. But if I turn that off, anyone can message me and I can just ignore all that shit. But if somebody follows me that's got a 500,000 follower base and I don't follow them back, they can message me versus trying to get (laughs) them to email me. I I don't Um, know. I don't know if I want to do that, but it is an option. I mean, would you even see it in the sea of messages? That you would receive on that? Yeah, we just because I, I I check my TikTok probably fifteen times a day just to see what metrics are doing. Right. But I would just clear those notifications. So there's like ten people currently that has tried to message. I don't know. I don't I'm know. I'm at 150 <clears throat> requested messages on my right. TikTok. Right. But you and I are very different. People are trying to holler at you. People are trying to have conversations with you. People want to be your friends. This is the Peaches Show. It's not the Chris and Peaches Show. So I don't have that kind of interaction like you have. It's not even close. That's insane to me. I, I would think that. It's not even close. But I, you also run the main podcast channel. I've gotten four emails about interviews. Like for a men's segment? Mm-hmm. Four. And I've made like three videos. And you've made two videos and you've gotten hundreds. It is the Chris and Peaches. It is the Peaches and Chris show. I, I, I am the behind the scenes grunt working to make sure that this stays above and you are the personality that everybody wants to be friends with. And that's totally fine. But I, I need to be able to, to interact with people to get them to come in. And if that means I have to act as your manager to get people to come fucking talk to you, that might be one of those things that has to happen as much as I don't want that to be a thing. So I don't know, <clears throat> but we do need to find other people that are willing to come or travel. Um, well, <clears throat> I'm going to interrupt you. Knowing that you're not getting message requests the way that my account's getting message requests, I can see how that could be a manageable thing. Yeah. And it might actually be worth it because if you don't follow them back and they're trying to reach out to you, you have no idea. Right. I'm also worried about your stress levels. My stress levels are through the fucking roof already. I so know. I, I woke up this morning at 4 a.m. because I could not sleep thinking about that delivery that's coming later today, taxes. And how I'm going to make everything work with editing and the people that we've got in our corner right now. And there was a very, I don't want to do this anymore. I get that. So. I get that. You know, and I do, I I know that like, I know that's just because I'm under a lot of stress and it's easy to go fuck this than it is to actually push through. through, But I'm not a quitter, so I'm going to push through and we're going to figure out how to make all this work. It's just. I admire that about you. I hate it. I know. It would be so much easier to just be a workless and be like, 
every Fuck other it. man on the planet and just be like, all right, guys, I'm not doing this anymore. Yeah. But um, it is what it is. I sent um, Recover Your Power from TikTok. I sent her a, a message at like 4.30 this morning or maybe it was late last night asking her if she would be willing to come in November because mm-hmm. she's lo- she's Florida. I don't know. I, I think that we need to make more videos and just keep pushing, trying to get people here. Yeah. You know, there are people as we are doing interviews and we start having a lot of that content roll out. There will be more people who are willing to, to do this and want to be here. I think more willing to commit to it. too. <clears throat> right. Because they're actually seeing what's happening and yeah. it's not just a. But for, for people who also have a, a small following, 50,000, 100,000, half a million, they really want to be on the podcast because we have the following that we have and they know that is exposure for them. Right. And I'm also willing to pay people speaking fees. If there was a possibility that we could get Candace Owen on the show and there was a, a speaking fee, I would yeah. max out a credit card if that's what it took to get her here. Just because I know that that would make your your existence. You know what I yeah, mean? You would be so would. so stoked over something like that. I would love to have a conversation with her. So, I love that you're so willing to do things to make me happy. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, it, it, I want... I want you to be able to experience things that most people will never experience. And this platform is the ability for us to do that and the money that we're making by reinvesting because we haven't taken a profit from this. I have reinvested everything that we've made on this minus our Vegas trip. And the Vegas trip was mainly paid for from the tattoo shop. I did spend some of our, our pre-order money while we were out there, but Mm -hmm. I mean, that's right. (laughs) Got it. Got it. It takes pool profits every once in a while. So I love you. I love you too. Very random, but I just appreciate the things you put yourself through to do this. And knowing that I am a main factor for you doing it. Means yeah. A lot. Well, Mark Driscoll, who also I would love to get on the podcast. So if any of you go to Pastor Mark's church, tell him that to be better wants to interview him. I've sent an email. We're tithed to him, like mm-hmm. whatever it takes to get him in here. Speaking fee, fly you to, we got to go to Arizona and hang out at your church for a little while. I don't care. But he said that as a man, you have to work. And if you have a wife and kids, why not work for your wife and kids? You got to do it anyways. At least put a purpose behind it. Yeah. I have purpose behind it. So. How long are we into this? 11 minutes. I'm crying. <laughs> That's funny. Oh, I need to take a moment and just take a sip from our To Be Better brew. Yeah. <laughs> Shameless plug for the coffee brand. I like it. Yeah. I'm very picky about my coffee. That's the French roast. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we got, I ordered, Um, I have 10 bags on the way. Yeah. So, or nine more bags on the way. I'm excited. I'm excited to do my cor- my corfee. Corfee? Guys, see this? Wait, where'd it go? Where'd it go? Is it on the back? I think it's on the back. Oh, it's on the pocket. The side. I'm bringing it back, bitches. <laughs> <laughs> I got my Jinkos in. You I've did. washed them. I've worn them. And I've gotten compliments every time I've worn them. Every single time. Yep. Doing the thing, bringing it back. Live, now you're living, a trendsetter. Living my 15 year old life all over again. I love it. 15 to 25, 22. <laughs> 22. I'm a little salty. That I'm they jealous. don't have any women's clothing. Yeah, you look so good in them, and I want to. They're match. so comfortable and they're thick. They're not like crappy, you know, jeans. All right, let's get into some emails. I, I don't want to waste a whole lot of time today because I'm going to get a phone call at some point that I have to leave. All right, so this email is titled "Wanting to Be Better." Good morning. I've recently started listening to your podcast. I've seen some of your clips on TikTok regarding relationships and wanting to take a listen to see if there was any information or tips I could bring into my own. The check-ins will definitely be one of them. A little background information. I am 26 years old and have recently taken a job as a truck driver. I am away from home five to six days of the week. I'm also getting married at the end of September. Oh, so that happens. Yep. Congratulations. I hope everything is going swimmingly. Me and my SO are struggling to put the finishing touches on our big day, but I know we'll manage. As to why I write to you, I don't feel like myself anymore. It could be the fact that I'm not home every day like I used to be and the added stress of being a truck driver. Since taking this job, I've noticed I am quick to anger, thankful not at people, but I fear at times go but I fear <clears throat> as time goes on it could change. I can't always make it to truck stops at night. So there are times where I'll go days without a shower or keep up with personal hygiene. Editors note, this is lack of planning slash depression. There are truck stops with showers everywhere in the U.S. Where is he getting his? Uh, They're right. And and I got to be honest, that was probably Zach that did that. Mm -hmm. But that is depression. It is depression, yeah. Your hygiene is the first thing to go when you get depressed. 
That's why I always make it a point, no matter how I'm feeling, to get up in the morning and brush my teeth. Yeah. You can Navy bath, too. Yeah, I can't. I, I've washed yeah. myself in, in bathrooms, fast food bathrooms. I don't give a shit. You take your little washcloth in there and give yourself a Navy bath. There's nothing wrong with yeah. doing what you got to do. I mean, it's, it's frowned upon to use the handicapped toilet, but there's a sink in that room every single time. Just close the door. Give yourself a quick scrub. Especially if it's 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning. Right. I was I was going to comment on that. I can't always make it to truck stops at night. Delivery will be there in an hour. We literally just sat down to record. Sorry, guys. Weird cut incoming. Well, guys, I'm slumming it. Me too. It's now like 14 hours after we tried to record this morning. Yeah, it's 8 o'clock at night. Uh, so not, not really 14 hours. It's probably like 8 hours, but it feels like 14 hours. It's been a long fucking day. It feels like it's been a week. Um, do you remember where we left, le uh, left off on this? Because I think we were only like 20 minutes into an episode. We were. <clears throat> Um, so we ended where emailer said, I can't always make it to a truck stop at night. So there okay. are times I'll go day without a shower. And I think we came to the general consensus of that, that is depression. Yeah. Yep. So picking up into the email, I have noticed that I have been more emotional lately. I avoid sad things or keep, I avoid sad things or deep truths for fear of crying. My mental state is declining. My anxiety is up whenever I'm on the road. And at night, I fight off suicidal thoughts, wondering if all this pain is worth it. I don't have my usual outlet of doing stand-up comedy because I am in new places every night, and they're usually in the middle of nowhere. I get, like, stand-up comedy being a release. And it sucks that he doesn't have one. Yeah. There's TikTok. Yeah, give me TikToks. Could go live on TikTok. Right. Then you have your audience no matter where you're at. That's a good solution. Could be. I'm scared to leave my job so close to my wedding. We need the money and I feel like... We need the money and I would feel like I went and got my CDL for nothing. And I don't want to disappoint my fiancé. Okay, so as a wife... If I knew that you were in this place, like fighting off thoughts of unaliving yourself, we're, we're swapping careers. Yeah. There's all other ways around that too, though. Like if he's over the road and he's mm -hmm. gone for days on end, he could uh, apply for local jobs where he goes home every night. Yeah. My, my adopted dad is a truck driver. Brandon is a truck driver. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Brandon does over the road stuff. JJ doesn't do that anymore. He works, you know, local. He's home to Danielle every morning. Yeah. So there's there's ways right. around that. You get your CDL, and, and if you have to suffer at a job you don't like for a little while, you start putting applications in for the ones that mm -hmm. benefit you. You can work for, like, public distri distribution centers, Walmart, mm -hmm. Kroger's, wherever they're at. That disappointment's a fear. Unless your fiancé have has given you reason to think that this would disappoint her. Right. The loss of income, knowing that there's a wedding to pay for, I can understand being a problem, too. I'm currently on episode eight of your podcast, not started yet, and have loved everything you guys said and the stuff you guys implement in your personal lives. I remember listening to the Gentleman Bonus cast, and it really hit home. I want to be better, and I know I can be better, but I know I currently lack the motivation for change. I'm young, and I still have life in me. I shouldn't be giving up this easily but I currently lack the motivation to change. So it's not motivation that you lack, it's discipline. Mm -hmm. And there's a difference. There's a big there difference. Is. When my motivation fails me, my discipline's there. Right. So you can have discipline without motivation. In my opinion, you can't have motivation without the discipline. Yeah. I try to tell people it's like gasoline and nitrous. It's what? Gasoline and nitrous. Oh, I thought you said gaslighting nitrous. And I was like, okay, I'm going to need you to lie. No, that. gasoline. So your discipline is your gasoline. It's there. Mm -hmm. That motivation is the nitrous that gets you going, like that extra boost when you're really fucking feeling it. You get going hard on it. And then when your motivation fails, nitrous has run out. You're back to using your gasoline again. That's discipline. That's a good way to put that. I acknowledge that I don't like working at all. 
I've been working since I was 15, 16, and they've all been physically demanding one way or another. And my fiance has expressed the want to be a stay-at-home mom. Did he just say he doesn't like working at all? Is that, is that what I just heard? Quote, I acknowledge that I don't like working at all. Period. Hmm. I enjoy working when it is something that I am passionate about. There's certainly been jobs where I'm like, fuck this. I don't want to do this. I can't believe I'm here crying in my car in the parking lot. And then I take a deep breath and I go in there and I get my paycheck. I've never cried from a job. No. I quit roofing on a lunch break. Yeah. My first day. Cause fuck the heat. Mm-hmm. But I've also had jobs that I've hated, but I all, I don't mind working. Mm-hmm. Like I, I don't mind getting dirty. I mean, I don't, I don't, I would rather not do it every day. But I haven't had to do physical labor outside in 20 years. Right. But if that's what I have done my whole life, it wouldn't phase me a bit to go out and do that. But that's, you know, men have, uh, we need a purpose. The idea of not working doesn't do it for me. I don't, I don't think I will ever truly retire. Even before all of this started, I was semi-retired. I was right. still opening businesses and involved in shit. I enjoy the grind of it all. Uh, mm. We're not using the term grind anymore. <laughs> Excuse me, we're not using the term grind anymore, so I can't say that. I enjoyed the purpose that it gave me. That was a good way to put that. I have certainly cried from a job, and it was a very shitty customer service-based job. And I was very weak-minded when I was in all of that. If I were in that setting now, I would very much be a different, polite, yet I'm not taking your bullshit. Is that book that I bought you here or is it the studio? It's at the studio. You know that 100 years ago, 93% of working age men were in the workforce. And now it's less than 60%. And that doesn't count men who are no longer looking for work. So just able-bodied men who are working or looking for work, it's less than 60%. <clears throat> because men don't want to work anymore. Because... It, yeah, I, I really wish that book was here so that I can pull that stat out of it. But yeah, um, I have a hard time with that. And I'm trying really hard not to belittle him. Mm-hmm. But if you are a man, it is your duty to provide for your woman. And if you can't do that and you're not willing to go to work every day and just suck it the fuck up, you shouldn't get married. I believe that. I, I truly believe that. Yeah. And I know that there are people out there who strongly disagree with me and are willing to allow somebody else to take care of them. But do you think this is a this is his depression speaking. I don't know. I mean, he's he's working even though he doesn't want to. Mm-hmm. So that, that says something. But how can you how can you lead if you're if you're the one being led? If you have no no freedom to make decisions and you can't. Man, I, I don't know. I have a real hard time with a man who won't work. In any facet. Yeah. Back into the email, and my fiance has expressed to me that she wants to be a stay at home mom. It's usually in a joking manner, but I want that for her. She works just as hard as me, if not harder, and has gone through some traumatic experiences. I have come up with two ideas for businesses in which we could possibly earn income, but with new job, wedding around the corner, my mental state being fucked, I haven't done any research or anything. Well, that's good, because if you don't like to work, don't open a business. It's nonstop. Yeah, it's 24-7, and it's not just you you have to worry about. If you have employees, you have to worry about them. Mm -hmm. Any stress that you have at work is going to 100% affect your home life. Like, on top of that, only um, 10% of people that that want to own businesses actually shoot their shot, and out of that 10%, only 2% make it in success. Span it over three to five years, that number goes down. I was about to say, isn't it like the first year... Is like the make or break. It is for and most. And then from there, you get to the three-year mark and you're golden. Uh, I mean, there's still a lot of work to be done, yeah. but it does get easier after year three because you learn all the mistakes in the first two years. Right. Yeah, I stand by that. People think that they can open a business, just collect money and not work anymore, and it's, it is it is 24-7. Mm-hmm. And the bigger your business gets and the more responsibilities that you have as a business owner, the less you get to do free shit, like go to the parks with your kids or go to the beach or, you know, amusement parks or take vacations because even on vacation, you have to fucking work. We just experienced that. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yesterday was my first down day since we got back from Vegas. I have still not taken a down day since we've been back from Vegas. I think you need one. I I fucking know I do. Yeah. Yeah. 
I really needed yesterday. I was, my body told me I needed yesterday. I was ready to fall asleep on the couch at like seven o'clock last night. Yeah, I could see it. We also work through our depression. Yep. That being overwhelmed and depressed, you haven't done any research. If you're running a business and your depression hits you and you go three days without doing anything, you have fallen behind by about three months. Yeah. And your business is probably going to fail. Yeah. The world don't give a shit about you. Mm -mm. The world doesn't give a shit about your depression. It doesn't give a shit about what you're going through. Your family may care about what's going on with you because they obviously love you. But how does that look when you're like, yeah, my business failed because I got depressed? It looks weak. Yeah, you don't get to do that. Especially when you've quit your job. You're you're fighting to try to make this business successful. Mm -hmm. You're praying to God that everything works out the way that it's supposed to work out so that you can fucking pay all of your bills at the end of the month. Because when you start a business, your bills go way up. It's a lot. There's a lot to it. And you can't just not feel like doing it because you're depressed. And again, he's working through his depression. So I'm not saying that this is him. Right. But getting it, to that, letting it go to that extent is a very real possibility yep. with the way that things are being articulated in the email. Right. It's a probable future. I feel like we're really ragging on the guy and I want to give uplifting advice on how to like battle that depression to not get to that state of really fucking things up because I'm depressed. Yeah. Well, I mean, he's working through it. He's doing exactly what he should be doing. Mm -hmm. Complaining about it's not going to help anything. Yeah. I understand the need to get it out. And it's better to vent to us than to your partner. Yeah. I mean, they obviously need to know that you're going through shit, but like, I don't, I don't do that to you. I don't do it either. Right. We know, Hey, I'm really going through it. And then if we really <laughs> need to talk to it, we go, we get into the conversation, but for the most part, we just give the heads up and go about our day. Yeah. There's a time and place for that shit. Sometimes it's necessary and sometimes it's pointless. So I figured out what I want to say that hopefully is uplifting. So you're recognizing that you're tied to that depression and you're not doing any research because you're overwhelmed and you hate your job and the wedding's around the corner and you don't want to do this and you're worried about disappointing her. I'm sure there's like almost a guilt or a shame tied into all of that. And I know you catch yourself in moments maybe on YouTube or you're fucking around on your phone playing a game and you're like, I really should be researching something right now. Or I want to start that business, but I have no idea what to do. I'm so overwhelmed. I'm just going to play a video game instead. Those are the moments where you really need to stop what you're doing and look into that shit. Yeah. All of the things that you said as the excuses mm -hmm. are the reasons that he should be researching, looking for businesses to do and all of that shit. You hate your job. You're depressed. You're trying to get married. You're trying to support your family. Oh, okay. Not so all of those things that he's using as the reason for him to be overwhelmed mm -hmm. should be the fuel to get him to do the things that he needs to do to be that motherfucker versus wallowing your own self pity because it doesn't do anything for you. I'm glad you clarified. I thought you meant like the playing the video games on the phone or watching YouTube. No. I was like, I don't understand. Don't get me wrong. I, I watch YouTube and play, yeah. play my game, but you playing your game at nine o'clock at night when we're laying down. I know I do it in bed too. Cause there's things that I have to keep up with mm -hmm. <laughs> daily maintenance. <laughs> <laughs> I'm invested. I've been playing that game for a year. Yeah, you have. And I've spent a lot of money on it. How much? Uh, you don't want to know. I do want to know. You really don't. I'm curious. I would probably a grand. Oh, I was going to say 500. No, I would. I'm going to low ball it at that. <laughs> I spent like $220 on it the other night. Shut the fuck up. That makes me feel really good about the time. So I'm like, should I spend four ninety nine? <laughs> no. And then I spend 10 minutes. I'm like, why not? I haven't done it in a month. Yeah. <laughs> they have the fucking game, man. They, the developers get you. They have these events. I know the events get me too. And it's one of those things where like, because I'm part of a guild and we're ranked three in the world. We have an image to keep up. Well, it's not even that. Like you, you get points mm -hmm. and it helps the entire group. Right. So like I go through and see who's spending what, and there's only two people in the group that's ever in the money that I'm in when I'm spending, I'm always trying to outdo them. <laughs> so every time I hit, I, I see like, I'm not going to say his name, but the dude will hit the number one spot. And I'm like, fuck you, bro. So I'll buy a bunch of shit to get my name back up there. And then 15 minutes later, he'll be back on top and I'll message him like, stop it, you dick. <laughs> and then I do it again. Um, one night I beat him bad and he messaged me afterwards. He's like, bro, what the hell did you buy? <laughs> I was like, I don't know. Things to speed up my building and resources. He's like, oh, okay. <laughs> That's hilarious. It's stupid. It's such a waste of money. <laughs> 
but I want my I want to get my city to level thirty because there's so few people that are that high of a level. And once I get to that high of a level, I'm fucking decimating everyone who's under level twenty. I'm gonna start bullying like we're playing poker. I'm here for that. And yeah, it's petty, petty shit. <laughs> <laughs> Two things I want to note on. Um, I am also one of the higher cities in the game that I play in. I think it's called like Whiteout or whatever. And I am level 18, and I think the highest is like 22 right now. And I'm like, I'm catching up, fucker. Yeah. Second, I love that you have a relationship in your life that's built on trying to outdo someone financially to get your name <laughs> on the top of a leaderboard, and you shit talk each other. It's so stupid. It's amazing. Yeah, it's dumb. It's dumb. We could have taken a vacation with how much money I spent <laughs> on that game. We could have spent like a weekend in Tennessee for that money. I'm going to be honest. I'm happy with where that money's went. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's dumb. It's Age of Origins is the name of the game. It makes you happy though. And you have a relationship <clears throat> with somebody in the world. You, you know what? Um, you know what actually got me playing that game was I was playing. Um, was it Cartoon Bubble Pop or some shit like that? Hang on. Oh, the Bubble Pop game? For the Toon, Toon Blast. I was playing Toon Blast mm -hmm. and it was like watch an ad for a free life. And I'm like, fuck it. And that thing popped up and I'm like, oh, and it was like a, a bridge and it was just dude shooting guns, killing zombies. And they got surrounded. And I was like, I want to play that. Right. It's nothing like that. You have to go into the settings of the game to even find that little thing. Oh, fucking. Fillers. And it's stupid. It, it, like, it's like a plus 10 or times 15. Like, yeah. And like, I, that's what I wanted to play. I just wanted to do this and kill zombies. And here we are thousands of dollars later. <laughs> It's so stupid. I also want to point out that you watched an ad on a different game to get a free life versus just paying for the life. <laughs> <laughs> That's you're not wrong. That's so stupid. <laughs> I've never spent money on Toon Blast. Nope, never. That's hilarious. And I'm at like level 6,000 or something on that. Like I, I've been playing that game for I don't know, seven, seven years now. It's I go through my lives and then I switch over to another game. I'm doing block block, block Doku now or whatever. Oh, yeah, that one game where you're matching it up yeah. to clear it. It's like a static Tetris. Yeah. You truly are a light in my life. Yeah? Yeah. You make me happy. I try. All right, back into the email. Before you get into that, did you see, see the links that Caitlin sent you? I did. Okay. Yeah. Did you order anything? Yet? I did not, because that's that's your department. I'm just spending the money on it. Okay. But we need to get a 55 Word. gallon tank, and then we have to. I think we should build it on the back porch with you guys wearing lapel mics. Okay. Versus having to do it at the studio and then move it down here, Makes or sense. even just do it in this back room, and I can set lights up. Okay. But you'll have to wear lapel mics. Okay. I'm dry. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. I can't believe that worked. <laughs> I did it for the joke. <laughs> Reminds me of Donkey from Shrek. <laughs> Wasn't that the second one? I don't know. Where he's like, are we there yet? And then he started getting super annoying with the mouth pops. Yeah. Yeah. And he got right between them. Mm-hmm. I can't wait for the kids to be old enough to watch those movies. They can watch Shrek now. You think so? Yeah. They were pretty okay watching He-Man earlier. I really thought that there was a video. Oh, it's too scary. And it, he was into it. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. He was sitting there with his corn on the cob, like leaning forward. And every time something happened, he would scoot a little bit forward. Yeah. There was a Until point he where he, the chair. there was a point where he was standing <clears throat> so close to the TV. I was like, go sit like at your plate. <laughs> I'm excited for him to get into He-Man. Yeah. That's a bonding thing for you, too. I, I wish they still actually had the show on. You can buy the entire series from the 80s yeah. on Amazon, but they remade it in 2002, and that's what I put on, and I don't like it because He-Man in the 80s was like Arnold. He was huge. Yeah, that's the He-Man I remember. The 2002 <laughs> He-Man is like a fitness competitor. Like, it's like a french fry. Yeah, you're not it, dude. <laughs> <clears throat> my fiance lately has expressed to me that she sometimes feels like what she says doesn't matter. We have had a string of bad luck recently and I've been completely freaking out. She would try to calm me down and give solutions, but I'm so fixated on the bad thing and being too stubborn to listen. Wonder what, what I wonder what bad luck is. <clears throat> I wonder what those things are because broke things happen to broke people. Right? So like if you ain't got no money, your tire goes flat. He, he says it. Okay. Yeah, it's there. 
Um, before we move on, I want to touch on something real quick. You, as my husband, as my man, are my rock in life. When I was with men who were not my rock in life, it would pull me more into my masculine. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. So you being an absolute mess, and she is always the one that has to be calm. Of course, men can be a mess sometimes. There are times where I'm your rock. There's a healthy balance in it. If she is constantly trying to reassure you, and you're always the mess, and you're emotionally unstable, there could be a little bit of that power dynamic. Not power dynamic, but... Um, power shift. Huh? It's a power shift. A power shift? Uh, I meant energy shift. So your exchanges are uneven. That could be one of the things she's holding anger in on that could be contributing to arguments or disruptions between you two is you're always a mess. I'm going to hold my thoughts on the luck thing because I want to see what he has to say, but I have a whole lot to say about that. I don't realize I am wrong until it's over. I've apologized about it, told her I hear her concerns, and I'm working on keeping my head straight when the problems arise. I am a mess, simply put. As mentioned before, I am 26. I still watch corn multiple times a day if I can. I know it's a problem. I am not eating right. I'm not keeping my physical or mental health in check. I have noticed I am not always present mentally at home. I feel like my fiance is doing all the heavy lifting and I want to change that. If that was true, you would change that. That's lip Mm -hmm. service. What was the luck thing? He hasn't given us an example yet. Okay, I thought you meant like being fixated on the bad thing. Yeah, I want to know what the bad luck thing is. Uh, So I didn't put the bad luck and him fixating on the bad things correlating to bad luck. Well, he said uh, we've had a run of bad luck. I am assuming that there she's having issues with him watching corn multiple times a day. Well, that's not bad luck. That's bad behavior. There's a, an, a fucking difference. We had two businesses destroyed by a hurricane. That's bad. Luck. It's not. It's a natural disaster. Yeah. That's the price you pay for living in Florida. Mm-hmm. That's why you have insurance. And if I didn't have insurance, which did not really do much for me, it really didn't. It didn't even pay to get the business back up. No. It covered my equipment that was in there to a very small degree I took a huge loss, <clears throat> lost two locations, and had to move people around. But at no point was I like, this is bad luck. Mm-hmm. What was me? What was me? Mm-hmm. I said, okay, this happened. I, and I have to make the best of this situation. What do I need to do to do it? I don't, I'm, I don't believe in luck. Things happen in life. Right. They're going to happen. Mm-hmm. Your, your fucking cars are going to break down. Your tires are going to go flat. We dealt with that the day we bought a car. Yeah, on the way home from the dealership. Yeah, wasn't bad luck. The fucking tire went flat. It happens. That's not luck. It's maintenance. Yeah. So that's not bad luck. That's bad behavior. I. It, it, that's a perspective thing. Mm-hmm. Have you ever heard me say it's just bad luck? No. Because it's not. No. It's not. Life happens. It doesn't happen to you. It just happens. If you, if you, that's victim mentality. Mm-hmm. I've had bad luck. No, mm-hmm. you've made bad decisions. Or you don't know how to handle situations. It's not luck. It's life. Yeah, when you explain it like that, I have noticed a shift in my mentality versus going from, fuck this, why is this happening? I can't believe this is happening again. I knew something bad was going to happen to, well, that fucking sucks. How can I right. correct it? Is there anything I can do to correct it? Is this out of my hands? You can have problems or you can have opportunities. Yeah. And the way you view that is going to dictate the outcome. If you treat everything like an opportunity... You will problem solve real fucking easy. Mm -hmm. If you woe is me, this is a problem. I have bad luck. I can't believe this happened to me. Why God? Why me? That's a problem. Mm -hmm. You're not going to deal with that the same way that you would deal with something that you're looking at as an opportunity. So let's recap real quick. He doesn't want to work. Right. Flat out said he does not like working. Mm -hmm. He's overweight because he doesn't take care of himself. Not eating right. Right. Or exercising. Watches corn multiple times a day, which means he's getting himself off multiple times a day. So he's a sex addict. Mm -hmm. Um, He is watching something that is changing the way that his brain handles enjoyment. And and we know it actually changes the chemical balance in your brain. It changes the structure of your brain. Right. And it gets worse and worse with the things that you need to to get that fulfillment. It's going to eventually destroy the the sexual relationship that that he has with his woman. Um, Not just sexual, any... Deep, meaningful relationships will be affected. Right. He doesn't want to shower. He's not taking care of his, his hygiene. No. Um, what, what else was there? There was something else he said. 
Um, I, n- I have noticed I'm not always present mentally at home. Okay, so he detaches when he gets there. Mm-hmm. Why are you getting married, dude? What do you think is going to change? Because you're not willing to change. He said that he doesn't want to be that person. If that's right. true, he would start making the changes to do it. When you were 320 pounds and said, I don't want to be fat anymore, what'd you do? I started uh, keeping track of my calories and running in the morning. <clears throat> yeah, and a year later, you were down 100 pounds. Correct. Because you didn't want to be fat anymore. Yeah. Same thing. When I get to the point where I'm like, okay, I'm done with this. It's time to start lifting. I diet and lift, and I get down to a healthy weight, and I stay there until I don't want to do that anymore. Mm-hmm. Because that when you want to do something, you do it. Right. The difference between wanting and dreaming are two, diff- two different things. Goals are, are different than dreams. I can sit here and give lip service all day long. I want to be the best at my job and I'm going to go home and play video games instead of doing the research to do it. Or I'm going to go to the gun range or I'm going to go ride my motorcycle for six hours a night. Like, you know what I mean? That's, that's not you saying, that's not wanting to do what you said you wanted to do. That's you wanting the benefits of having that without doing the work to get it. Right. That's handout mentality, victim mentality. We don't do that. I wanted to touch on emailer said, I feel like my fiance is doing all the heavy lifting. I will agree with that. I do believe that your fiance is doing a lot of the heavy lifting right now because you're not even bathing yourself. You're an on the road driver, right? Over the road, yeah. Over the road driver, whatever it is. You're a trucker. So you're gone from home five to six days a week. And when you are home, you are mentally checked out. Yeah. Is that what he has? Is that what he said he was gone for? Uh, yeah, five okay. to six days a week. I'm going to double check now. Yep, five to six days a week. There's also drive regulations for those guys. Yeah. So if they drive for eight hours, they have to take eight hours off. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So like, I think, I don't know if that's accurate in terms of time frames, but it's something like that. So if that's what they're, that ice maker is going to drive me fucking nuts. I know. I used it for the little, <clears throat> little in the sink. Oh, you clean the garbage disposal? Yes. I appreciate you doing that because it, it, it shit stinks every once in a while. But, I know. Um, I don't remember what I was going to say. That happened, and then my brain went to something else, and it's not relevant to the conversation. So I'm going to be honest. Putting myself in his fiance's position, right? This is our life. I would be asking myself, what is the point of getting married? I feel like a housekeeper. He admitted that he is not mentally present when he's home. Yeah, I would feel like a roommate and a housekeeper. Yeah, well, he cheats on her five or six times a day. Right. Because that's cheating to me. And I don't give a fuck what anybody else says. You guys can disagree with that shit all day long. That's how I view it. And nothing you say is going to change my opinion on that. I agree with you. So we can get a whole lot deeper into that, too. If you really want to go there, sex is a huge part of a marriage. It is. The intimacy, the physical intimacy of it. You know, there's other intimacies, but that is a huge part of a marriage. And when that goes away, marriages dissolve. Mm-hmm. Right. Not necessarily divorce, but like the relationship dies between people. Right. The love <clears throat> isn't there anymore. Right. It, it, the relationship is a problem. Mm-hmm. So like he knows that he's not getting that need fulfilled from his partner. And he's going to a digital device to do that. Eventually, he's going to start looking to fill that need in person without his his woman. Mm-hmm. So what happens if they get married in a month or two? Or wait, weren't they supposed to get married at the end of September? Was that this email? Oh, man. Was it? Back when getting married? At the end of September. Yep. So now they're getting married. Now they are married. Or Yeah, right. They are married. With him him using self-pleasuring and, and a cell phone for, for videos to make that happen five or six times a day. Yeah. Cheating on his woman, his now wife, five or six times a day if they actually got married. Why 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 are you getting married? For both of them, I, yeah. I, I on her standpoint alone, if she knew that, I wonder how she would feel about it. Yeah, could you imagine the betrayal? Like, I have experienced. I would feel so fucking betrayed. Uh, I was with somebody who would send me corn while I was at work. Yeah, so I knew what they were watching in that moment to self pleasure themselves. That's disgusting. It's part of the reason that I turned to eating. I felt like I wasn't good enough. I felt disgusted with myself because I was not, I looked nothing like the woman that he was watching. There was a a resentment. 
all of its negative emotions and all of it made me very sour towards my relationship. And now <laughs> very clearly that relationship did not work out. Are you processing? No, I'm trying okay. to, to find a way to say something without it coming across as super fucked up. Okay. And the only way that I know how to say this is looking back on that situation. How fucked up does it feel knowing that you are somebody that allowed that to happen? Like, like you, you allowed yourself to be in that position and, and like it was for years too. you allowed it to make you feel less about yourself than realizing that you were just with a scumbag, yep. that this person has fucked up morals and values and you chose to stay for whatever your reasoning was. It was love. That's fucking insane. <laughs> was it, was it love? Um, no, looking back on it, no, it wasn't love. It was more of a a trauma bond. I'm going to be honest before you, I don't think I've ever truly experienced love. It was more of just attentions being fulfilled. Me playing house. Do you think that if you had a father in your home growing up that you would have had a different understanding of what that relationship was supposed to look like or what relationship should have been? <clears throat> and I'm going to hit you with something else afterwards, but I need to know that first. Um, like with my father specifically, if you had a father in the home, if you had a, a man in the house, your entire childhood, that a, a man, not a male, right? a man, do you think that you would have had a different outcome in life? Yes. Okay. For all those women out there who are independent, miss, I don't need no man. You may not, but your fucking kids do. Yes. Because men bring something into the house that, that women do not. Mm -hmm. And if there is not a man in the house to show your children the way you are supposed to be loved, your children will go up and do exactly what that was. Yeah. And, and you had a fucked up situation that you al allowed to destroy your mental health, allowed you to destroy your self-worth. Mm -hmm. and, and like, this is something that years late, I mean, I don't know how long ago this was, but this is, you know, obviously years and years have gone by. And it's still a problem because every time this gets brought up, you mentioned that those things happened. So it's still something that bothers you. No, I'm just trying to relate. Really? Okay. That makes sense. I get, that makes sense too. I hear that shit and it bothers me. I'm sorry. Because I'm so protective of you. Like yeah. it, it, it eats at me a little bit, but I don't want to ever, ever, ever hear some shit like that. Like I have such a hard time. Uh, anyways, I, I don't know. I don't know. I want to piggyback off what you're saying about having a father in the household. I was in the relationships I was in because of what I witnessed in my childhood. So mean? all through childhood. Sorry, guys. Kid at a night terror. I just saw the sound of freedom will be playing on Angel Studios streaming app soon. <gasps> really? Yep. Okay. I'm going to have to mentally prepare for that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you remember what we were talking about? We were talking about your personal life. You said... Sorry about the cookie, guys. <laughs> you said that um, you experienced the life you did because of what went on in the home when you were a child. Oh, yeah. Growing up witnessing a lack of boundaries and experiencing a lack of boundaries and seeing things tolerated that someone with low self-worth or low self-esteem would only tolerate and not seeing relationships outside of that. If you've never seen a banana, you don't know it's yellow, right? Right. I hope all of that made sense. <laughs> <clears throat> I want to the man, I want to be the man she can truly count on. I want to feel more confident in myself. I want to look and feel good. I want my fiance to be able to show me off and vice versa. Simply put, I want to be better. No pun intended. I was planning on going back to the gentleman bonus cast when I had some time to take notes on the things Chris said. I guess I'm asking what can I do? What are small steps I can take? What are little wins I can look for to keep me going? Thank you for reading. Start exercising. Stop eating garbage. Stop watching porn. Mm -hmm. Get over the fact that you don't want to work because as a man, that's what you're built to do. Especially if you want to be able to retire your woman. Right. But those are those are the first three things, four things. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Everything else should fall in line after that part. You're going to have to work for the rest of your life. 
that I don't want to work thing is a huge, huge problem for me. Yeah. Um, I respect that he's doing it even though he doesn't want to, mm-hmm. but stop saying that. Right. You know how much harder it is to do something while you're fucking complaining about it instead of just going, okay, this has got to get done. Let's go. Mm-hmm. And you get it done and you don't have to worry about the shit anymore because you fucking did it. But if you complain the entire time you're doing it, it makes you hate what you're doing that much more. Right. It's like focusing on the pain of things versus focusing on the outcome or focusing on the details of the job. Or why you're doing it. Focus on why you're doing it. I have a, I have a wife now. Like I have a woman to support. I need to be the guy that I want to be. If you really want to be that, make the fucking changes. Yeah. Uh, I would recommend start listening to audiobooks. Yeah. If you're on the road for eight or nine hours, you can get through a book a day. You could. I, I, I audiobook like crazy. I was really hoping we were going to land that Audible ad. Yeah. Did we? Uh, I haven't heard back from Maria yet. Gotcha. I love your podcast. At times it feels like I'm sitting in your conversations and contributing like we are three friends hanging out shooting the shit. <laughs> He's going to hate later episodes. Yeah. <laughs> Especially the, the choice theory episode about the work list. I forgot that we did that. Mm-hmm. I would I would listen to choice theory, bro. Like if you're if you're really going through that and you're really feeling about that, read Choice Theory by William Glasser. Even if you got audiobook it, buy a hard copy, doesn't matter. You have a full fucking week on the road, you can get that book ingested at least three times over that week. Yeah. And you will learn a lot. <clears throat> and that book is um it's all about reality therapy, but choice theory is what it's called before practice. When you understand choice theory, you realize all this shit is a choice. It's a decision. Mm-hmm. Watching corn five or six times a day, even if it is an addiction, is a decision. It is. I bet just cutting corn out of your life, you'll see your depression lessen a little bit. Probably. What did you think of the cookies? They were, you could tell they were keto. They actually weren't keto. Oh. Well, then I probably (laughs) shouldn't have ate seven of them today. You could tell they were not cookie dough from the store. How about that? (laughs) Yes, they were made from the cookbook I got from the 60s. (laughs) Well, I feel like a fat ass. I'm so sorry. Yeah. Well, that's what happens when you assume. Well, I thought you saw the cookbook laid out and the butter. I don't pay attention to what you're doing in the kitchen. Okay. Next time I'll announce it. I'm so sorry. The brownies were keto, right? They were. I left a note. Good, because I ate the entire fucking pan of them (laughs) over the course of three days. Those ones were low carb brownies. Yes. I'm so sorry. Explains why I've been so run down the last day or two. Are they good? Yeah. I've, I've eaten almost all of them. Okay. At least they were good. <laughs> My cooking hasn't failed. Hooray, diabetes. <laughs> they were dark chocolate chips. I like that there was salt in them. Yeah. Yeah. Last thing on this before you get into the next email is, is that when the discomfort of change uh, becomes greater than the discomfort of not changing, you'll change. Mm-hmm. So when you look at your life and go, okay, this sucks. I don't want to live like this anymore. I really have to do something. You'll start actually doing something because you realize how much it sucks to live like that. Mm-hmm. You have to make change. <clears throat> and if you want to be a business owner and you want to be a husband and you want to be a provider and, and you want to be that motherfucker, you got to do the work. If you want to be a gentleman, simply watching the videos isn't going to do it. Right. You can have a gym membership and not, not gain or you know muscle or lose body fat because you're paying out of guilt and not going to the gym. Mm-hmm. You got that gym membership to feel good, and now you pay out of out of, out of guilt. <clears throat> that little key card on your keychain. Yep. So every time you walk in someplace, you're like, oh, look, he goes to the gym. Yeah, set your, your keys down on the donut shop counter and be like, oh, I should go to the gym after this donut <laughs> or after all those cookies. There's a gym out there. There's a treadmill in it. Yeah. And now that I know that those aren't keto, I feel like I need to go run on it. Well, be doing I it ate a lot of those cookies. <laughs> wah, wah, wah. <laughs> Upside is I'm glad you still like my cooking. Yeah, I do. When I was 18, I used to go to LA Fitness. <coughs> and when I was done with my hour and a half workout, I would go to Taco Bell. Yeah, there's um the U-Fit in Port Charlotte has a McDonald's in the parking lot. Mm. And the amount of people that would leave the gym and go right to Starbucks or McDonald's. What's the point? Yeah, there isn't one. Not only did you just cancel out your workout, you gained another 200 calories. Yep. All right, next email. Thank you times three. 
Dear Chris and Peaches, my marriage has been struggling since our child was born in 2020. Honestly, our marriage has always been shaky due to not creating a strong foundation. Neither have had good examples of strong marriages to look up to. Falls back to what I asked you earlier. Mm. All you independent women out there who say you don't need a man, your kids do. Correct. Since watching your videos, a fire has been lit within my spirit. I have spent so long focusing on my husband's shortcomings or things I have perceived as shortcomings that I didn't see where I was failing him as a wife. Our daughter is three years old and she's struggling with a speech delay and behavioral issues, both of which are taxing. After hearing Peaches talk about how she strives to create a peaceful environment for her family, I started examining our home life. I was not the creator of peace in my home. I was breeding negativity, resentment, and chaos. And I'm betting your kid picked that up and it mirrors that behavior. Because kids mirror behavior. They do. <clears throat> yeah. So when you have a rotten kid that doesn't know how to act, it's because of you. That's a lot of introspection. Yeah. Taking a step back and recognizing that you are just a negative force in your household. I used to be that negative force. Yeah. Yeah. It's fucking hurricane. When I was having a bad day, everybody was having a bad day. And that stemmed from my childhood. When you don't ask yourself why you do things, you just do things out of habit or out of reaction. And that's scary. Yeah. I created a list of changes I could make to foster peace within my home. I started attending a mom's group at church in my community. Love that. I also went through all my social media accounts and unfollowed accounts that promoted that hot mess mom life Ooh, and accounts that, that bashed men and husbands. I love that. I, I'm, I'm enjoying this, too. Right? <laughs> I'm picking up what you're putting down, making change, not just talking about it. I'm here for this energy. I started praying for God to change my heart to be softer towards my family. We have changed the shows and movies that we were watching that promote the lifestyle we do not want. Most importantly, my husband started attending a new church with me. I love I, everything about this. Right? Can, can we pause for a second, though? Okay. Let, can you read uh, what she said before they changed what they were watching on television? I've started praying for God to change my heart to be softer towards my family. You guys have to be so careful about the things that you pray for. <laughs> I, I i speak from experience and things like every time i'm like god i need wisdom and patience boy do i get put into some situations where my patience is tested because like any skill it's got to be worked on mm -hmm. it's not just given so when you ask for that softer heart you are going to be getting your some trials put in your way and you're going to have to learn new behavior patterns and new yeah. habits to have that softer heart <clears throat> but I also think that following into that very next line saying that they changed the things that they're watching on TV is going to condition your brain to do exactly that. Yeah. When you're watching the, the Kardashians or you're watching <clears throat> you the real know, the, housewives, right. Or the, the, day the dating say. cheating thing, you know what I mean? Or any of that nonsense, you are ingesting that you, your thoughts become things. You're going to eventually start mirroring, mirroring those behaviors. Mm -hmm. So changing what you allow in your home is a great way to start fucking implementing change in your life. Yeah, I've been paying for patience. I've been praying for patience, and our son threw two temper tantrums today. Yeah, I'm telling you, God <laughs> is like you want it. Remember, you asked for this. Um, I'm like, can you just give it to me in micro doses? Right. Like I heard that I have a patience <laughs> allergy. And I know that, God, I know we read studies that said that if you give peanut allergy symptom people, like just little tiny doses Microdoses. of peanuts, eventually the allergies may go away. So I need it in small. God, I don't need you to just give it to me all at once. Like I need yeah. little tiny pinpricks of patience because my, it's not there. I feel like Agent <laughs> Stall getting punched right now. <laughs> it's funny. I'm going to be honest. That first test of patience, I failed today. Yeah, I, I fail them every day. Uh, second test of patience with my potato plant, I feel I handled a lot better. See, I find it's easier for me to pray for other people's patients. <laughs> <laughs> like mine. <laughs> yeah, I have the other day prayed over all kinds of things for you, but it, it's cool if, if God's testing other people. <laughs> I just don't want to have to go through that. <laughs> uh <laughs> I'm just recognizing that I prayed for mental fortitude and growth. And you got it. And I got it in multiple ways in my life. It's crazy. Yeah. Wow. 
Our church has small groups that has been a godsend for us. My husband attended a men's group that does activities like skeet shooting. Love that. Skeet? Pool. Oh. Yeah. It's called skeet shooting. I was thinking they shoot from the little clay discs. To yeah. The wall. Wrong shooting. Wrong skeet skeet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, skeet skeet skeet. <laughs> 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 Could you imagine? Okay, and now I'm just picturing the pool, but it's Little John. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> pool. What? <laughs> pool. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so stupid. Okay. I need to figure out my Halloween costume. Oh, no, I'm going to be Donald Trump. Are you? I am. I need to get all the things for that. I need to work on my face. Yeah. You know, just paint yourself orange. Get yourself a really bad wig. You'll be golden. Is that it? <laughs> it's going to be huge. 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 It's going to be the best Halloween costume ever. <laughs> In the history of Halloween costumes, no one will ever Halloween costume like Peaches. <laughs> I'm going to have to watch a lot of his speeches now. Yeah. Yep. He's the best husband ever. There's not a husband like my husband. That's ever husband as hard as my husband. <laughs> you could ask anybody. Yeah. Russia, China. Do you like what you signed up for? It's fun. <laughs> Never know what I'm going to get. I love that. You are my box of chocolates. Thank you. <laughs> All right, back into the email. He said it's been great for him because he didn't know how to be a godly man that leads his family, but he now has accountability with this group at church. Love that. I want that so bad. Me too. Finally, he heard me watching one of Peach's videos one night and asked if we could watch your YouTube, ch- your YouTube videos together. I'm seeing a side of me and my husband that I didn't know existed. The best part of this for us is a change we see in our daughter. She's happier. She's not having explosive emotional reactions anymore. Her speech therapist told us she feels like she's seeing a whole new kid. Thank you from the bottom of my heart for the work you're doing. Your videos and advice help me save my marriage and family. It's because you've become new parents. Mm -hmm. Kids' brains at that age are very malleable. Like, they're going to pick up a lot. I love emails like that. Yeah, I do too. I wish that there was a church here that I was that I, I was into. Yeah. It, every single person that I know that goes to church when I've asked them about their churches has either complained about every church in the area mm-hmm. or there are people that I don't want to associate with. Yeah. Yeah. I have a community of men, which is super dope for me, but it's not the same as having them around. And it's crazy because the people who are in our lives are starting to find their faith because of us. Isn't that insane? It's in, it is insane. Like, and we don't push it. It's not like it's a conversation that yeah. happens all the time. I, I try not to be that guy. I would rather live live godly than preach godly, mm-hmm. because a lot more comes from action than hollow words. Anyways, did I tell you that we donated? Uh, yes. I'll, that I'll, okay, good. Okay, I was gonna have to cut that out anyways. So I'm glad you. That dinner didn't do it for me. Didn't do it for me either. You want some ramen? I had eight cookies today. Mm. No more carbs. It was I probably like, some it, was, it was probably six cookies today, but I'm not eating lettuce <laughs> ever. Thank you so much for your help, but we need more. Okay. I want to start by saying thank you so much for helping my husband and I. He came to me with your podcast and it's been life changing. I want to say it is very refreshing to hear that husbands are presenting the podcast. And wives are being accepting of it. You know that we actually have a really large male listening base. Really? Our Discord and Patreon community is mainly women, Mm -hmm. but our average listeners are mainly men. Wow. By like 10%. So it's like a 60-40 thing. Okay. But. That's crazy. It is crazy because the Discord is so many women. Yeah. Every once in a while I see a man's name pop up and I was like, oh, look, you. (laughs) (laughs) I'm trying to be more active in the, the men's group. That's the non-paid men's group. Yeah. Me, I mean, me too, women's but for group, the women's. Right. We're going to start doing our live calls on Sundays while you're doing kids stuff. 
so that it doesn't interfere with our life anymore. Yeah. I'm going to start doing it on a weekly basis too. Okay. For a long time, my husband and I have been going through a rough time. For a long time, he will tell you he was numb and stressed out from work. I tried for a long time to talk to him about the stress, but instead of coming to him in a productive way, I came with you never and I always. Ooh. Ooh. Glad you listened to the podcast and learned better than that. Mm -hmm. It's dirty business right there. We don't do that. I feel like that's a verbal slap to the face. It, I think it's more than that. Yeah. Yeah. Tell me that doesn't sound superior. You never and I always. Keeping score, superiority, oh, okay. you're less than me. How dare you not keep up? Like I didn't think of that going in a one flow conversation. I was imagining one argument of you never do this, you never do that. You're always slacking in life. Yeah. And then another argument could be, well, I always do this. I think because we were in this place for so long, I stopped trying. I gave up asking for compassion and romance. We've been married now for about 10 years. About two months ago, someone started showing me the attention I was craving from my husband. Oh, no. Unfortunately, I was weak and cheated on my husband one night with this person. Deep down, I knew this was the only thing that was going to end my marriage because I wasn't strong enough to end it myself. I'm not saying this as an excuse. Looking back on that feeling now, I know it's because I wasn't ready to end my marriage, but we had been in this place for so long that I didn't know what else to do. So she did it hoping that he would find out and he would end the marriage. Is that, is that what that sounds like to you? I did not take it that way. I read all of that back into the email as I didn't know what else to do as in, well, my husband's not giving me that attention. I want the attention. This person was willing to give it to me who wouldn't take it in that position. Right. But she said that she knew that it would, it would end her marriage. She did it because she knew that that was going to be the thing that ended her marriage. How did she word that? Did I mishear it? Okay. Unfortunately, oh, deep down, I knew this was the one thing that was going to end my marriage because I wasn't strong enough to end it myself. Right. So she wasn't strong enough to walk away. So she cheated. So she cheated, and that was going to end the marriage. Right. So how was that going to end the marriage? If she wasn't strong enough to walk away, A cheating. Reason. Cheating. Right. But, okay, I mean, I guess maybe. I don't know. That's easier to say versus I've fallen out of love with you. I don't want to be with you anymore. Yeah. Maybe you're right. I cheated. He gets infuriated. I can't believe you've done this to me. I want a divorce. And that takes the guilt off of her saying I want a divorce. Full circle. I agree with your first statement. It's still pretty rough, though, even from what you just said. Yeah. Because she's willing to put herself in a position to end the marriage by being the hated one. Like, you're going to be hated either way, but it's a different type of hate. Like, is it how could you hate versus I can't believe you left me hate? You know what I mean? I, I can respect somebody who can come to me and say, look, because of X, Y, and Z, I no longer want to be in your life. Is it going to hurt? Fuck yes. Is it going to sting? Am I going to get defensive? Probably. Yeah. I would rather have it said to my face versus hearing down the grapevine. Yeah. Oh, so this is recent. So two months ago, someone started showing attention. After it happened, I came home and told my husband I wanted a divorce. Oh, so so I was wrong. Okay. That was the strength she needed. The confirmation, maybe? Maybe, yeah. I could see how if someone cheated and then they felt no guilt afterwards, that's like, okay, I am done. That's crazy. I told him that I still loved him, but we hadn't been in love for a long time. I let him know that this doesn't have to be a fight and we could work through this today. I was always scared he wouldn't leave me because he didn't want to pay child support. We have a five-year-old little boy and I have a 14-year-old. I told him we could be the best co-parents anyone could ask for. To my surprise, he wanted to fight for our marriage. I did tell him everything that happened and why in my head it happened. This is where it gets hard and we need help. He is blaming himself for my cheating on our marriage. I feel that cheating wasn't just to hurt him. It hurt our marriage as a whole. It did. It did. So I'm going to use like an anatomical example in this. So the marriage is the human body. And certain things are going to get flung at this body like pebbles that you can overlook disruptions. Those are minor. Not even going to get a bruise from that shit. 
then things happen where you have a life-threatening gash on your body. Cheating is one of those things. You can do your best to try to mend the wound and hopefully the healing process goes well. Infections can happen. Um, necrosis where the tissue starts dying can happen. Life-threatening issues can happen weeks after the healing process has started. There's always never a guarantee that it's going to heal 100% and be back to what it was. I mean, it's never going to go back to what it was. But the healing might not get to 100%. I like the way he approached it, though. Wanting to fight for the marriage? Well, no. He, or taking accountability. He took accountability. And what Why? How did? What did I do to cause this? Yeah. I, I, I got to be honest. I think I respect that a lot. Yeah, he could 100% <clears throat> been like, fuck you. Right. How, how could Calling you do this her names. Me? Right. Belittling. And I know people are going to be like, there's no reason for anybody to ever cheat. Because we hear that all the fucking time. But in the reality of the situation, she was miserable in a relationship. Mm -hmm. They were not in a loving stage. They were in no the intimacy. roommate phase. No intimacy. There were a whole lot of things that he could have done differently that would have prevented this. Mm -hmm. Hate it if you want to. He was cheated on. Yes, it was wrong. Yes, it sucks. But there's a whole lot of things he could have done otherwise to it that would have never Let's say, what gotten did he do? to this point. What did he do to prevent it? Right. They could have had a con they both could have had a conversation way early on that would have prevented that. Yeah. She could have even had a conversation of, look, somebody reached out to me yesterday. And today I recognize I wanted to text them good morning. Yeah. That tells me that something's not right in our marriage. Those conversations are really fucking hard for a lot of people. It ends it in its tracks, though. Yeah, it does. That's how you, that's how you resolve things. Right. But so that also comes down to training. Yeah. How are they going to react? Right. How have they reacted to things previously in the past? Have they tried to fix things when I brought it to them before? Right. Or has it been a complete fucking meltdown and turned into a war zone? Do I end up apologizing for my feelings? Right. Yeah. So in that situation, if I were with somebody and I came to them and said, look, we haven't had sex in three years. Somebody messaged me yesterday, made me feel really good about myself. And this morning I almost texted them good morning. And they can get, the person would get defensive, whatever they go through. And I'd be like, look, either we end this now and resolve it. Or I could have continued this, actually cheated on you. And then we'd be in a completely different world of hurt. Okay. So he, what if, <clears throat> because we've had emails like this where the, the person is like, we have a kid together. I'm not in love, but I don't want to leave for the kid. And I can co-parent. So do I suffer and, and just let that happen? Like, there is a possible... Well, so I guess maybe I shouldn't even get into that because it's a whole lot of what-ifs. Okay. Yeah, it's a whole lot of what-ifs. Back into the email. He told me that if he had just gave me the things I was asking for, then when someone else showed me these things, that I wouldn't have let it happen. That's factual, 100%. It is, it is factual. But where's the line on that? Because at some point, manipulation will take place. People will end up doing more than they should. Because takers will always take and givers can only give so much. Mm -hmm. So in a scenario where he's not doing enough and it's clear that it's not enough because she cheated. But where is that line from? I, I just can't give her everything she fucking wants because eventually I will be taken advantage of. I will be the one that always bends. She will never meet me on common ground because I've become a pushover. Right. And I don't just mean sexually, obviously. I mean, like, in all facets. There there should always be an ebb and flow in a relationship. And if you give and give and give and never get and get and get, that's a fucking problem, too. Right. I am blaming myself because I wasn't strong enough. I wasn't a strong enough person to not let that person in. Since this has happened, my husband has given me everything I have ever asked for and more. He helps with the kids. He'll make dinner on the nights. He knows I'm going to work late. He literally is the most amazing husband now. It's because he almost lost you. I mean, in an aspect, he did lose her. No, he absolutely did. Yeah. He absolutely did. And then she came home and then asked for the divorce. And that would have been the solidifying, like, out of his life lost. So I want to touch on he feels guilty because he was slacking as a husband. She feels guilty because she wasn't strong enough to turn down someone who was giving her attention. In both perspectives, there is a reason that they were behaving that way. Yeah. Right? And 
arguably it could have been because of the other person's behaviors. I mean, it's not arguably, it is both of their behaviors. Right. In that, per, in that moment where you're both feeling your own guilt, you have to take accountability for that. And now you have to figure out what are you going to do going forward right. to avoid this situation? Sitting here in this guilt and wallowing and I'm such a piece of shit person. I can't believe I've done this to you. I don't deserve you. It's going to do nothing but progress you guys towards the divorce that you asked for. Right. Yeah, I agree. Into the email. My issues are, one, I know I should not be rewarded. I should not be rewarded for cheating on my husband. Everyone that I have talked to says this isn't a reward for cheating, but an incident that would put a spark back into my marriage. That's not the right way to look at it either. That is not. It is not a reward for cheating either. Sometimes you have to have a heart attack to realize it's time to start exercising, not drinking and smoking anymore and like getting your your health in order. Yeah. Sometimes you have that life threatening. Oh fuck. I can't keep doing what I'm doing. and It'll kill me. Mm -hmm. Oh fuck. I can't keep treating her like this or she's going to leave. Right. Sometimes you need that eye opening thing. Mm -hmm. Should it have gone that far? No. No. I agree with that. It's like a very serious medical scare. Yep. After this one, you're not going to survive the next one. Two, with how quickly he has changed, I'm scared it's something that isn't going to be sustainable for the long term. So in that fear, in that issue, I would be optimistic yet not naive. So he is working overtime to correct the massive wrongs he's made in your marriage. You need to have grace with that. This has been going on for two months. And the behavior has continued for two months. Yeah. At some point, that behavior is going to become habitual, Mm -hmm. just like the falling out of of the lust and the falling out of intimacy became habitual. When thing when those patterns repeat, people change. I'm willing to bet when they first started dating, he wasn't the man he was when she cheated on him. Right. And now he's course correcting. If he does it long enough, that's who he'll become. Mm Three, I'm scared these changes are only because of the fear this incident caused him that I was leaving and not because he actually wanted to change. Does that matter? Right. Does that matter? If he didn't. Okay, I have to reread that. I'm scared these changes are only because of the fear this incident caused him that I was leaving and not because he actually wanted to change. That doesn't matter. Men don't change because they don't want to. Yeah. That that I I no offense to the emailer that's a stupid fucking statement. Yeah. The man almost lost you. He's changing to keep you. Mm-hmm. That's the reason. Right. Whether he wants to be this person or not, he is changing who he is to make you happy. It should be enough. It should fucking be enough. Yeah. With you saying that, this looks this could come across as almost as reasons looking to not accept his change. Mm-hmm. Are you still trying to talk yourself into your marriage? Right, into your marriage. I do a whole lot of shit I don't want to do every day of my life. Yeah. Because it either needs to get done, because it'll make the kids' lives better, because it'll make you smile. Like, I want to see you smile. Do I want to spend the money to do it? Not really, but that smile's worth that money. Does he want to lose you? Absolutely not. Does he want to fucking go through all of this to change? Probably not, but he's doing it because keeping you around is that much more important to him than the change. Maybe it's too little too late for you. Maybe it's too little too late for him, but like, I don't know, man. It's, that's the sacrifice mm-hmm. that men make for for their women. Like, and, and marriage is a sacrifice. It's a fight. It is. All the time. And I don't mean a fight in like a negative term, but like. If you want it, you'll fight for it. Right. We should be trying to win you. Mm-hmm. All the time. But we should also know when when winning is not the answer. You know what I mean? Like, I, it's a weird thing because I, I keep seeing all the videos going around and the way that people are being manipulative towards each other. And I'm having a very hard time watching dating content right now. But they're married. They're not dating. You know what I mean? Like, it, it's just a very different thing. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know. Back into the email. Please know that I fully understand what I did was wrong. I have never cheated in my life, and when I wake up, it kills me every day, the pain that I have caused both of us. Okay, so you're either going to wallow in that pain and hate yourself for it, or you're going to... So I'm doing a lot of research for the self-help journal I'm writing, 
And a lot of the negative emotions that we feel towards ourselves, we put ourselves into cycles of that. So the guilt and the shame, and I can't believe I done that. So you're either going to be stagnant in that or you're going to grow from it. Which one are you going to do? I I am very lucky with the way my brain works. Yeah. Yep. I feel like I am ada- <clears throat> adapting that from you. I am one of those people that once I have made amends or apologized for something, I, there's nothing more that I can do right. because whatever the action was is done. Mm-hmm. So if I've owned it, I've acknowledged it, taken accountability, apologized, whatever the case is, mm-hmm. I'm moving the fuck on. You can forgive me or you can not forgive me, but I'm not going to live in that existence right? because my life has moved forward, whether it's been a day, a year, or 10 years. Mm-hmm. So and all the foul shit that I've done to other people, it, it's done. What do you want me to do about it? Right. And if you're not currently in my life and you don't you know, like matter, matter, I'm not going to try to make amends. I'll give you my apology and I'm moving the fuck on with my life. Mm -hmm. So for her, she regrets it and she's having all these like issues. She's going to destroy her marriage because of what she did. Right. Because she can't move past the mistake she made. Right. Own the fact that you made the mistake. Know that you felt the way that you did about it. Remember that feeling so you don't fucking do it again and move on with your life. Yeah. If he's moved on with his life and he's trying to make amends, don't dwell on this. It's not going to help you at all. It's going to hinder you. Yeah. That, drinking that poison every morning. Mm-hmm. That letting go of things, like today is a new day, is was and is one of the hardest habits I've had to unlearn in my life. Like I said prior, when it was a bad day, it was a bad week. Yeah, it was my feet. Oh, I thought I heard footprints. In the it was kitchen. my feet on the, okay. the bark of the spinny thing. Um. The spinny thing, the lazy Susan, the <laughs> giant, giant wooden fidget spinner for my feet. You've gotten on me about doing I it. I know. And I, I, now that I saw you do it, monkey see, monkey do. Mm. I'm going to start calling you on it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm using my monkey toes to get in between the bark. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> it's not a toy. <clears throat> I bought it. It's my toy. <laughs> I actually bought it to take pictures of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And I've never used it for that. My journal sits on it. It looks really good with my journal on there, though. Yeah, I like it. It was also a reoccurring thing where a week would go by and then it gets brought up in a bad mood. And I'm like, what the fuck? So that was something that I learned to just do. So unlearning that. There are times now where I'll think of something that you said like a year ago. I'm like, no, that's not him. Mm-hmm. Even things from like two weeks ago. No, that's not him. Yeah. <clears throat> and once we had the conversation, unless I'm in like panic mode and I need reassurance, it never gets brought up again. Yeah. I, I cope with that shit on my own yeah. because like you said, you're drinking a, your own poison at that point. Yeah. Yep. Hate to be the guy that says give it to God, but that might be the answer for you. When I listen to your podcast, you guys have talked about doing calls with people because I haven't caught the price for that. When I listen to your podcast, you guys have talked about doing calls with people because I haven't caught the price for that. Is that really what it says? That's the sentence. Oh. Okay. I would love to set up something with you guys because I think we are both in need of some help to get past this. I'm sorry if when you read this, it doesn't make sense. I have a reading disability. It was just that one sentence. Yeah, everything else is on point. I thought it was me, to be honest. Um, so what you need to do is send us another email. Mm-hmm. And then in the title, put Zoom call so that yeah. the wizards can get it in Patreon and Discord and they can proofread whatever email you send. Because the way that we do this is you would have to send another email <coughs> detailing the problems that you have. We will then have the screeners read it. And if they think that the email is safe enough for to read us to read on air without getting our our channel demonetized Mm -hmm. um then we can figure out how to go about doing that because we are actually doing that now we're we just started it like two weeks ago but uh we also haven't figured out a pricing structure yet because it's still email email answering but we're answering with you on a zoom call so that we can answer your questions if we did this with them i would want both of them on there i agree you want to do another one this one is titled I miss my husband and best friend. Uh Uh-oh. 
Hey y'all, I'm going to try to be as detailed and as short as possible as I'm really bad with my words and I am so sorry in advance if I struggle to get my point across. My husband and I have been together for 11 years. We have three daughters, the oldest, age 13, I had from a previous relationship, but he adopted her and the girls we had together are nine and six. We have lived a traditional marriage lifestyle right out of the gate where I'm a stay-at-home mom and he provides for the family. We have had a dope marriage with a great sex life. We have always gone above and beyond to flirt and make each other feel wanted and appreciated and loved every day. We have had some communication problems here and there, but we have really worked hard to work on it and work through it. The past six to eight months, things have changed. He hasn't stopped completely with the flirting and other things, but he has, signif- but he has significantly stepped back from all those things. I understand our partner goes through things that we do not understand and all we can do is love them and try to talk to them about it. When I've tried to ask him what has changed or if he is going through something, he tells me no and gets agitated. I immediately step back as I don't want to push him or nag and give him space. I still do all my normal flirting as in sending him the sexy pics while he's at work, telling him how sexy he is, how proud of him I am and how appreciative I am of him, etc., but his mood doesn't seem to change. Our sex life has taken a huge plummet as well. It has gone from can't keep our hands off of each other to maybe once or twice a week, which is very unlike him. After 11 years. Yeah. And I've been the one to mostly come on to him since he's been this way. When I really knew there was a problem was when we went to the beach for the weekend, just him and I, and it was like we didn't know how to act around each other. We hardly spoke and were intimate at all. When I mentioned it on the way home, I was told I was talking dumb shit and all it's going and all it's doing is making him angry and he doesn't know how to fix it. Okay, so it sounds like he's depressed. It sounds like there's something's probably happened with his hormones. Mm-hmm. And as much as I hate to be the guy that like he needs to get his blood work checked, he needs to get his fucking blood work checked. <clears throat> if they've been together for 11 years, assuming mm-hmm. they got a 13 year old kid, he's got to be in his mid thirties by now. Right. Right. Um, did she say his age? She didn't. No. Did he? Okay. I, I would, that would be rule number one. Get mm-hmm. your hormones checked. You both should do it together. You never know what you're going to find in a blood panel. Uh, and as much as is like, I, I don't want to be the hype man all the time. Matrix hormone has done a lot for us in terms of, of, our personal lives and finding out what's going on in our bodies. And you should be doing that anyways. Mm -hmm. So check out matrix hormones.com hit the new patient form, fill it out. There's a drop down. If you hit to be better on there, it'll save you $200 on your consultation. Um, I would have him get his blood work done first and foremost, because if his testosterone is low or his estrogen is high, or if there's an imbalance there that could create that, that could also create depression. So if he's depressed, And his hormones are off. They balance the hormones. The depression goes away. Sex drive goes back up. That could stop that. Mm -hmm. There could be stress factors. There could be age factors in terms of like ED. Work factors. Work factors. There could be, you know, the intimacy could be gone in your relationship for other reasons. We don't know. Like you haven't given us anything yet. But everything that that sounds like stress, depression, and hormone issues. Mm -hmm. And stress, depression can come from hormone issues. Right. So. Back into the email. So I dropped it and never said another word and drove the rest of the hour and a half in almost silence. I'm tired of walking on eggshells and tired of trying to fix it but not getting anywhere. He just seems so angry and distant. He laughs and jokes with everyone but me. And when I try to joke and love on him, his mood changes and he just gets mad saying how it's not the time or it pushes away from me. Huh. Okay, well, I was going to say first him laughing and joking with everyone but you. He could be masking himself. Yeah. And you are getting the truest raw version of him right that now. That was actually my initial thought is that he's putting on a front for everyone else and he's fucking miserable. But because you're married, you get to see that. Right. Yep. That's exactly where my brain went. The next sentence. And when I try to joke and love on him, his mood changes and he gets mad saying now is not the time or he pushes away from me. So if you guys are in a more public setting and you're trying to love on him because he's in a good mood. That is definitely not the time. I didn't think about that. Yeah. I I was thinking about the fact, see, this is crazy how different our brains are because we were dead on with the, the first part of that. Mm -hmm. And the second part was that if he is depressed and he is masking and doing all of that and you're trying to love on him, you should know that he's going through what he's going through because Mm -hmm. 
even though he may not have verbalized any of it, you can tell when your partner's off. Yeah. You tell. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's just all there is to that. You should know. And and there's things that you can do to try to work around that. And there's definitely ways that you can talk about it. Being um, accusatory is definitely not it. Right. You know, if you were on vacation for the weekend at the beach and you wanted to try to have sexy time, you should have tried to have sexy time, not waited, and then been disappointed and thrown in his face when you leave. Like, mm-hmm. it's not how you do that. That that text message shit works both ways. Right. So life works both ways. If you're wanting that, you need to be the one to initiate it. Sometimes you'll always be the initiator and sometimes you won't be at all. That balance doesn't matter. You're keeping score. Mm-hmm. Who gives a shit who initiates it all the time if the outcome is good? You know what I mean? Like, I just don't. But I also understand the need to want to feel attractive and wanted and desired. And like that could happen in other ways. You just have to take an account of what's going on in life. Mm-hmm. Like me buying you your knives or your hammock that should be here Thursday. Like even if I'm depressed and I'm not physical, I still love you and I'm still doing things to show you that I love you. You just have to, to pay attention to what's actually happening. Right. Some people get caught up in the me, me, me aspect of it and why... Is, is he doing this to me instead of what is he going through or what is she going through? And that creates a, a whole nother problem in its own. Yeah. Check-ins. Do the check-ins. Yeah. There could also be a frustration on his end if you're constantly pushing the fact that he's not satisfying you or. Mm. That's a good one too. Yeah. If <clears throat> every week you're trying to initiate sex and for the fast pl- past six months, He's been really going through it and his mood hasn't changed at this point. He expects you to understand. Yeah. Yep. And that's, that's, that's also a problem on his part. He should communicate what's going on. Right. But you're, you're probably dead on on that one. Yep. When you tell me that you're depressed. So there are times where I'll like, I'll try to initiate and then you'll tell me like, Hey, I'm depressed. I'm going through it. And that'll be like the first conversation of having that. And then from then, I don't try again. A few days will go by, and then I'll try to initiate again and see how you're feeling. And it's either, okay, we'll try and see where it goes, or it's not the, not today, babe. Yeah. And there is never a, I just wish we had what we had in the beginning. Yeah. It's an understanding. Life changes, variables change, mental health changes. Yeah. I, I think it's important to remember, too, that, like, when you're not living with somebody, mm-hmm. sexy time will always be different than when you are. Yeah. Because you get very limited time with your person, so you try to make the, the, the most of that time that you get with them. And then, like, stress of jobs can happen. That can change sex life. Mm-hmm. Stress of jobs can change sex, sex life for people who are courting still. It just looks different. Right. Because now it's, hey, I had a bad day. I'm not going to come over tonight. Mm-hmm. No sexy time happened. You didn't get cuddle time. You didn't watch TV. You didn't even have dinner. Oh boy, just stayed home because he had a bad day at work and he doesn't want to fucking do anything. Right. But when you're living together, that there's no decompression, mm-hmm. especially with three fucking kids in the house. Like, you guys have to remember that your partner is a person. Yeah. And you need to be in tune to what's going on. We do the same thing. We both have the depression. It happens often. Mm-hmm. And some days, like, we'll we'll hype each other up in it and build anticipation at the end of the night. Be like, hey, I'm fucking going through it now. Like, can we do this tomorrow? It's not, like, a bad thing to be like, okay, tomorrow. Right. You know, sometimes you just have to have grace. Mm-hmm. I got to be honest, the sexy time, though, important. If we go to bed and you still lay on me every night when we're both depressed and we still hold each other afterwards and, like, the routine of non-sexual intimacy continues it lessens the need of the sexual intimacy because i know the intimacy is still there Mm -hmm. so i think that that's important to remember too that you need to keep up with all of the non-sexual intimacy you need to be physical you need to touch you need to talk you need spiritual intimacy like there's a lot of things that need to be maintained there and the sex aspect of it will be affected by all of those other things Mm -hmm. so if you don't have grace with your person or you are always bringing it up and you are always nagging or you're not understanding what they're going through and they haven't been able to decompress. Like all of that will affect the sex life. Yeah. So back into the email. I just don't know what to do. Do I leave it alone and give it more time and keep loving him through it? Hoping he'll come back around or do I push a little harder to figure out why he has shifted away from me so much? Okay. So you pushing so far has not worked. 
So what makes you think pushing harder is going to yield a different result? Right. Okay. Check-ins need to happen. Hang on one second. I just really miss my husband and my best friend. I hope I was detailed enough. I'm sorry if it wasn't. Follow up. I realized I left some things out. I wanted to add that I take time in my appearance, like putting on a little makeup, wearing decent clothing, and fixing my hair, as it makes me feel better, and I love to look good for him. He is a wonderful man. I just missed the marriage that we had. So. Everything that she's listed has been superficial. I also want to touch on it's very, this came across as a very like self centered email. Why is that? Because she touched on they don't flirt as much. There has really been no, like I've noticed this changed in his life or like on this day, I really noticed a change. It's just been. Our sex life isn't what it was. I'm still sending him sexy pictures. I'm telling him how sexy he is. And by the way, I still put makeup on. Right. Yeah, there's definitely something deeper going on there. Right. This is. Yeah. I wish there were like conversations included. Like when you guys, when you've brought this up, what did he say besides just getting angry? Like I, what were his words? What was his tone? How often do you guys discuss this? Is this a a daily conversation for you guys? Yeah, I get that. There's definitely, it's weird. You know, I was thinking a minute ago that like with the, there's always a catalyst. And for me, when my sex drive gets fucked up, it's always my hormones or my depression. Yeah. And my depression's always worse with my hormones. Yeah. So like. When your hormones are off. Right. And sometimes it just means they're off balance. Mm -hmm. So like when I'm on my test through Matrix and I'm taking my injections, if I forget to take my estrogen blockers it can create problems like yesterday where I was tired at seven o'clock at night, woke up this morning, take took an estrogen blocker. And like, I feel better now than I did yesterday, Mm -hmm. but I was, I was, I was asleep almost instant last night. Yeah, you were. Um, And part of that was exhaustion, but I was also super depressed yesterday. Mm -hmm. And like today I still have lingering depression. I I guess it's probably not the right word. I'm, I'm overwhelmed today because I have so much shit that I have to do and how far behind I am on things. Mm -hmm. And I've got that like, get it done, get it done, get it done. Oh God, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? What am I going to do kind of thing? And I know that I can get through it. It's just a matter of prioritizing and executing. Right. Um, but I know that my energy has been different today because of it. But I feel better tonight. And I tomorrow morning, I'll probably take another one just mm-hmm. to, to get my balance back. I think a lot of that a lot of that can be resolved by people just staying on top of their shit. Yeah. And, and the way that I understand hormones and the way that I understand the food that we're eating and things that we're taking in, like, I don't think people realize how fucked up our bodies are. Right. So for me, my cognitive bias is always if something that drastic has changed, either there was a catalyst to change it or right. there's an imbalance in his body and he's unaware of it. Mm-hmm. Because most men won't do anything about it until their dick don't work. Right. And if he's getting to a point where his dick don't work, maybe maybe he needs to get his blood work done. I don't know. I wish there was more detail about, like I said, just conversations. I feel like there's there was no information there besides her emotion. Yeah, and her needs. Yeah. Do you think that there is a possibility there that? there has been a catalyst, something that shifted in their relationship that, that made him not want to do that. And as time has gone on, uh, he has found his needs met in other ways, whether it be corn or other people or, uh, attention on the internet or cause if your relationship is amazing, then all of a sudden it's not like something right. changed, especially after 11 years. Right. Right. There's a catalyst, right? People start seeing issues after like the two to three year mark. And then again at the seven year mark, yeah, but that shit, the, the seven-year itch comes down to, like, did I make the right decision? Did yeah. I marry the right woman? Like, could I have done better? You, you know what I mean? Because people, that's a long time to live a life with somebody, mm-hmm. and um, everybody everybody does that. Everybody, and it's not always with a person. Sometimes it's like, did I make the right career choice? You know what I mean? Like, it, you will always what-if scenarios especially for people who hold on to shit like that. So yeah. I, I don't know, but you're right at the 10 year, 11 year mark. Like you're in it at that point. It's a decade. Mm-hmm. Something happened. Right. And for it to last six to nine months and he gets angry every single time it's brought up. I'm just, I'm a hundred percent. What ifing at this point? So am I. Do you <laughs> think, 
it's going. Right. Do you think it could be he has told her what the issue is, but at this point he's tired of repeating yep. himself? I absolutely do. I absolutely do. Yeah. I wasn't going to say that, but I absolutely do. Because we are we are people who will tell you, men will tell you what's going on with us, but because we're not emotional like y'all are, it's not the same. Like, I can tell you I'm in pain. Mm-hmm. It, you know, this hurts. Or I'm having a bad day, but unless I'm a fucking in kidney pain... And you see that pain. You don't understand the level of pain I'm in because I'm always in pain. Right. You know what I mean? So, like, it's one of those things. Or if I'm, if I'm going through it today, you just know I'm going through it today. If you walked in on me crying with my gun in my hand, it would be a very different, I'm not. I'm going through it today, than me just telling you. But me just telling you I'm going through it today could be at that level, and I'm just navigating around the shit. So I do believe that he's. if there was a problem, that he's probably addressed it. Work is really stressing me out. I'm trying to figure out this new client or... You know, okay. uh, we're super stressed out about money right now. Like maybe we don't have money because money's a big factor for a lot of fucking people. Right. Maybe she's gained weight. Could be a lot of things. Yeah. Um, but I do believe that there's a strong possibility it's been verbalized and just not to the way that she needed to hear it. Or do you think it's something that doesn't affect her as largely as it does him? So she doesn't view it as a yeah. enough reason to be in the funk that he is. In? Probably. Probably because people don't, that's the perception is reality. Right. You know, the way that, that we perceive situations will dictate the way that we respond to the situation. Mm-hmm. Um, and we know people that are going through things and, and they can drag us into it and you'll respond very differently than I will. And whether that's life experience or, or whatever it is, uh, that's, that could absolutely be the case. If he's the, the bill, the breadwinner or the, the finance handler and, they are barely making ends meet every month and every month he is super fucking stressed about how to make ends meet or maybe he's secretly using his credit cards to keep things afloat Mm -hmm. and like he's telling her you know we're kind of kind of fucked up on money right now i'm stressed out about it and she's like okay and then tomorrow she goes to target and starbucks and you know then goes to the nail salon and hair salon and spends a thousand dollars on her credit card that he now has to figure out how to fucking pay like i've already told her several times that we're stressed out about money she obviously doesn't give a shit that I'm stressed out and she's just making me make it work. Like, right. again, these are all what ifs and I can yeah. do this all night long because she didn't give us any real information on what's going on other than she's not happy with her sex life. Right. Something changed. Something did change, yeah. Yeah. Um, there was something I wanted to touch on. You said that you'll spend money to make me smile even if you don't want to spend the money. Do you feel like I spend too much money? No, I tell you when when we can't. And you go, okay. Why was that the one specific thing you said that you would do to make me smile? Uh, I That was just the follow-up statement okay. that I was making. I don't know. I don't even remember what I said before that. So I don't know if I if that was the only thing. Okay. I have to take you for your word that that's what you heard and that's all I said. But I'll know when I edit back because yeah. I'll get to hear it again. But men men will... Hey, I don't remember. I don't remember where that was going or what I was talking about in that moment. Okay. So... It just made me ask because you said that you don't want to spend the money, but you will. I was like, damn, like, what am I spending money on? (laughs) Well, I mean, you're not a very bougie person. Like, you've got a couple of really nice purses. Like, you want a motorcycle and you want a Mercedes. But, like, you're not... um, You're not a Veruca Salt. Okay. I want it. I want it now. Mm -hmm. Um, So that's not really the case. But I also know that I will go above and beyond for you to make you smile. And sometimes that means buying you knife sets that are like 700 bucks or, yeah. you know what I mean? So I do spend money to make you smile. I appreciate it. I don't remember what I was talking about when that got brought up. I, I also know. see that as a problem for a lot of people, though. What? Making people smile or spending money? Spending money. To make somebody smile? Just in general. Yeah. Like that was always one of the that was one of the hard things when you and I first started courting. It was one of my big trust issues because when a man has means, mm-hmm. women will take advantage of that shit. Yeah. I've seen it my entire life. I'm going to be honest. When you and I started courting, I, didn't, I did not know how much money you made and I didn't give a fuck about it because I had my own money. Yeah. Doesn't change the fact that it's still a concern I know. for men. I know that. Yep. I was interested in you. Every single morning I wake up and see you and I just fucking trip and fall in love again. Yeah. I like that I still wake up in the middle of the night to pee and come out and your butt's not covered up. I did it so long it's now a subconscious habit. Yeah. Yeah. Came out of the bathroom at 3.30 this morning. 
your ass was in the air. I'm like, yay. <laughs> and I laid down and started thinking about taxes and whiskey carts and motorcycles and 4 a.m. It's time to get out of bed. At least you got to see my butt. I did. That's how I started my day this morning. I peed, closed the window, and saw your ass. I hope my ass made up for the window. It did not. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <clears throat> at least you've only caught it twice out of the hundreds of times I've done it. That's because you've caught it the other times. <laughs> it's because I remember to do it. I was so thrown out of my routine last night by you saying I'm going to go lay down. Yeah. 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 Yesterday was a hard one for me. Today was a hard day too, but I'm, I, I'm catching up. Yeah. I don't, I, I really, I have such a hard time letting go of things and I'll, I'll use editing for an example that this morning at 4 a.m. when I logged into Spreaker to find out what's going on for the podcast, the audio stuff, uh, Apple, Spotify, etc., and saw that there was nothing scheduled, I almost had a fucking meltdown because we've been recording a lot since we've got back. We have, we did episode 15, 16, 17, 17 again because we had the camera issue. Right. And then we had another camera issue. So, like, we lost both episodes of 17 my camera issue f- happened again while we were at the studio recording Steve's. So what? original 17 is going to go up as an audio file only. Steve's episode will go up as a bonus episode audio only. And then on YouTube, it'll have an overlay of me saying broken camera when I talk so that I can still use the footage. Mm-hmm. Um, we have the Nikita episode, which would be 18, I think. Uh, we did your woman segment. We did your woman intro. We did episode 41, 42. This is 43, um, and there's nothing, nothing Ready scheduled, right? And, and like we got, I had, so that was this morning. There's shit scheduled now. When we go back in there, I downloaded more of the audio files from AJ so that I can get more uploaded, but we're so far behind that I'm panicking because I'm so used to seeing red on that screen, and there's no red on that screen, yeah. which is a problem for me. But, um, and like I have ideas for new segments, and we've been emailing, and like I'm just, I feel like I'm just, fucking treading water and i know that i'm not i know i'm making progress because we are getting shit done mm-hmm. but it'd be like that <laughs> i'm ready to get off here and cuddle yeah yeah and with that being said guys remember you are the authors of your own life so grab a pen and we will see you on the next one bye guys <laughs>